board and then share screen, share the whole thing with you guys. We'll look back to it. All right, you should be seeing me now. Can you see me now? Yes. All right. So we're getting down, we're getting down. To it. Uh, t -t 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 -t. Where am I at 12? I think is right. All right, so you got two programs. One we're gonna work on in class for the next several weeks. Yes, I said the next several weeks. And then you got this grandma's friends phone program, okay? So on this one, what I want you to do is, we've been in chapter eight for quite a while now, but there's, um, other than arrays, there's some collection methods in the chapter. So I want you to use one of them to solve this problem. So I'm not gonna go into it uh, too much, but all you need is 10 names and 10 phone numbers, but I want them in a collection, okay? So read over, take the special time to read over that in chapter eight and uh, provide me with a program for that. The one we're gonna work on in class is called uh, McDougs. Or I have my example here is Doug, uh, Doug's Bugs, but it's gonna be like a McDonald's. We're gonna sell, you can sell whatever you want. I've had people sell, you know, everything from, like I said, bugs, snakes, food. Uh, I probably do the example using food um, as we work through it. But it'd be like a cash register where you can press on an item and it's like, I want two cheeseburgers. So you go click, click on the cheeseburger button. Okay. Um, you know, cheeseburger fries, Coke. There's no real numbers on the point of sale. Later on, when we get to the change machine part, then of course, there'll be numbers on the screen for what the person gives you uh, as far as money goes, how much your bill was, and how much change to return. And then the change return thing will be like the one in the cafeteria or uh, when you're checking out a Lowe's or whatever where it just returns the amount of money to you automatically. And then it'll print a receipt and uh, everything like that to go with it. Okay. Uh, this will be due on the 11th of May, the whole project. But each week, a part of it will be due, okay? So there'll be several parts um, to do and those will be due on a weekly basis. Let's see if I can uh, run this thing here. So this is what this sample looks like, okay? And we're selling bugs, all right? So I can add a bug, two bugs. So this top one is my total, or how much my bill is so far. The bottom one, of course, is the current one that I'm buying. And you can see I can get two, of bug seven, or I can get three of bug five, okay? And then, oh, you know what? I don't want uh, three bug fives, I only want two. So I hit the subtract button, it turns red, and then click on bug five, and now I'm down to two bugs. And you'll notice that that was what was uh, subtracted. But let's say that I, let's see, what button don't, let's say I try to subtract number six. And it says, well, I don't have, you don't have any bug number sixes, okay? And of course, this one here clears the whole thing. So I can go here, I'll just buy a couple things here. And then uh, click on next. 
And here's what my total bill is with tax, state and local. And here was my, so then if I try to pay for it with five bucks, it says, wait a minute, you have to have more than what your gross is here, buddy. So then I could put in 10 bucks. And it says I paid 10. <clears throat> My sale was 9.58. I, I they owe me 42 cents. And if you add a 25, 35, 40, and two pennies is 42 cents. Then if I click next, I get a receipt. Okay. With dated receipt with the time of my purchase and everything. And I could actually, that's what it looks like if I was to print it out right now. I can go to uh, page setup, if I want to, or I can go to a print dialog. I don't have a printer installed, so I don't know that that's gonna pop up right now since I'm not hooked to a printer. And then of course down here, new sale and I'm back at the beginning. So what do you think? So that's what we're gonna build. Any comments? So we have to build a bug selling program? No, you can sell whatever you want. Oh. I just had bugs. And you don't have to have pictures on the buttons. I just did that to make it cool. But I, like I said, I've had people sell tequila, um, whatever you want. I mean, amphetamines. I don't care. Different kinds of weed. I don't know. Um, matchbox cars. Uh, but let's keep it, you know, somewhat adult. You know, not you can't sell. I mean, you could sell. Um, like what you call it? cards or, you know, play, not playing, uh, what do you call them? Game card type things. Uh, and that I don't. Trading call. cards, you mean? What? Like, what do you guys call that? Like, not Dungeons and Dragons, but where you swap cards and stuff. Pokemon? Yeah, like that kind of stuff or something like that i guess you can sell whatever you want but i'm going to probably work mine with you guys anywhere anyway that uh i'm going to probably sell hamburgers and stuff and call it mcdougs or something like that so we'll have a point of sale screen Okay. And then we'll have a tendered. Tender just means how much money did they tender to pay their bill? And again, look at how this works. I'll hit the point there and then two, two, two. And look, the buttons, you can't do more than that. And like if I do, uh, as soon as I hit, um, Oh, my damn mouse thing is on again. Um, oops. I think my alt key is here. Maybe not on this one. But 2.30 here, let's say. And then that should work. And it, like you saw before, it um, won't let you go forward if you don't have enough money. You can go back and either add or subtract. It recalculates. Oops. My uh, touchpad's on and I keep bumping it, I'm sure. And again, calculates it all out here. Everything's right justified. Notice that. Okay. Uh, I'll probably take this back out because once you get to this point, you're pretty much committed to buying whatever 
uh, you were buying. And of course, it's an itemized bill, of how many you bought and everything, and a new sale button. Of course, you guys will be required to add a splash screen, uh, et cetera, to clean it up a little bit. So any questions on this? Notice there is not an exit button, it's just right here. And here you have, you not only have yes, no, you have cancel. So yes to close, no to start a new sale, cancel to continue, like if I wanted to continue, let's say I put one in here. And then I say, eh, you know, I'm done. So I can say, yes, I want to close it, not save anything. No to start a new slide, a new sale. So if I hit no, I get a new sale over here. And the program doesn't stop. And then cancel just means I go right back to where I was and can continue on. So there's three options now versus the two that we normally do. Okay. <clears throat> you probably won't need this in here. I'm thinking, I don't even see. But uh, here it spells it kind of out a little bit. And here's the first part and the second part of the first part. All right. So we're gonna go over here and I'm gonna create a new project. And then again, if I can find the type of application I want. And I'm going to just call this Doug's. Oops. I got to turn this off before it kills somebody. It'll stay off in Zoom. Let me just come on with Doug's. And you said we don't have to do the food? Uh -huh. You said we don't have to do the exact same thing? No. Just okay, to... just checking. I'm going to notice your Windows Studio 2019 update is ready for download. Uh, yeah. So this form is going to be my... Uh, Name it uh, form POS point of sale that stands for. Seems good. Change this font thing. <sighs> I just had the green for some reason. Just kind of looking here. Meeny, meeny, miny, mo. Pick one, Doug. Mm. So bright. Light yellow.
Maybe I just need it to be off color by a little bit or something. Light gray. That'll be okay. All right. And then font. Uh, la, 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 la. Let's go 10, I think. And I think I'm going to use Arial. Arial, regular. That's okay. Style. I don't want it sizable. Let's go six. 3D. And then start position, of course, is always, I like it in the center of my screen. And the text will be. Dugs, Fs in my case. So it should look something like that. And we'll go ahead and save that. Okay, I'm going to have some global uh, variables in this one. Okay, so I'm going to put those global variables um, in a main, a sub module, not a form, but just a module. A module is just like a form, except there's no graphic to it. Okay, so I'm going to go up here to project. Add a module. And right there. And the name is down here. And I'm just going to call it uh, mod main. It looks like that.
All right, so now, again, if planning this out, I know that I need certain variables that uh, I can see from all my different forms, okay? Because even on the last form, I need to be able to print a receipt of what was bought. And the costs and all that. <clears throat> so, my convention is <clears throat> that I use a G. And if you remember, if I have um, module wide ones, I usually put an M in front of here. I'm going to put a G in front of them. I say 12 items. I'm going to let you do this. And the items. So all these variables are ones that we're going to need later on. It turned it back on again. I think those are the ones we need, if you think about it, that have to be available all the time.
between these taxes, it looks like we're just losing all the money. Uh between these taxes. It yeah, looks you're like right. Losing all the money. I'm missing zeros, aren't I? That make you happier? Uh, it's still taxes, so not really. <clears throat> Anybody need more time? Okay, not hearing anything, I'm moving on. So, right here, let's see, how are we gonna do this? Let's do, for now we'll do this. Do, uh, do uh, You know what? Let's do this first. We're going to run it out for now. And then I'm going to have one. I'm going to say call. Now oh, that's kind of old fashioned, but that's all right. Initialize it. Uh, say here. You gotta build that way it's gonna occur. And then FRM S log until so this is a post S loop to B. Right now, I have an endless loop here because um, okay, what I want to do here is I think it's right here anyway. There we go. Right here, it's a startup form. So I'll do this again. Hang on. Go over here and right click on whatever you called your program. Go down to the bottom and it says properties. And instead of starting on form one, oh, I got to unclick. Unclick this, enable application framework. Go up here and then you should be able to see sub main here. Okay. 
and we're going to have to change the name of our right there. So right here, just get rid of that file right there. Let's go to file. That's a file. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple. Don't do this yet. I'm just going to see what happens when I press the button here. Form the last comes up. Okay, it's still there, so it's good. Let's see if it can't close it. Because the loop keeps opening it. So that's good. That's what we're looking for. All right. How did you set the startup form thing to the main module? Okay. So right click over here. Go down to properties and down here, enable application framework, uncheck that. Okay. Then in your drop down here, it'll say submit. Ah, gotcha. Oh, well, I guess I could have just left that mod main, couldn't I have? Mod main. Let's see if that'll work. I'm gonna change it because I liked it when it said mod main. Again, I'm going to be locked in an endless loop here. Oops. Main is not found in mod main. Ah, bad idea. Okay. Let me just look at that. And go back and make it the right one. Good main. And save it and then run it. Again, I should have an endless loop here. That's cool. That's what I wanted. Until we program that uh, that exit button or the uh, form closing, uh, that's what's going to happen. So not a biggie. So that's good. So in here, just below the end sub, I'm going to have something called a public sub. Initialize public because I want to be able to get to it from anywhere, any form. And so we got G underscore. I forgot what we call it. Uh, SDR items. And I'm going to start them at one zero. Again, let's see, I got 10 items or 11. And actually, I'm only going to use 10 of them. I'm going to start with one through 10. Over here, I got three, zero through three. Okay, so I got four, actually, I got four over there. So we'll see how this is going to work here in a minute. So the zero item 
is going to be what am I selling? Okay. And so here I'm going to put. I don't want these too big because I want them to fit on a button. I'm going to abbreviate something like that. The second thing I want is the price. So I'm going to go 299. I mean, Price has gone up three ninety, and then notice it's a string right now. Okay, my headpad's working again. My kingdom for a touchpad that doesn't work. Zero. Because this is going to be how many people buy. Every time, let's say that you buy two, then it would say two. This one is okay. So there's four things. So there needs to be ten more or nine more of these. So what I'm going to do here. Take that, control C it. Come down here, control V it. Get rid of this. Because I don't want it on every one. And then this will become two. Oops. Tell it, uh, I'm about ready. That's a two, that's a two. Before we do anything, we'll change. And then this will be some other item. Maybe go back and turn this thing off. Here, big dud. Oh, I'm missing it. There we go. Once I have these like that, I will know I can go B. B. Click on those and just add more. And this one will be. I got to get these right in the right order. So. Have four of every number. Again, I hope this didn't confuse you. I just didn't want to have an item zero. Okay, I can put it up there and not put anything in it. 
the tower of hell. Zero item. Yeah, it's not able to restart at zero. Two-dimensional array, storing four items for every one. So if you think about that, it's uh, four, zero, one, two, three, four. Did I have a four? Did I have a seven? Yeah, three. So four items there, 11 items here. So I get to store 44 elements is what I got room for right now, okay? 44 elements. That doesn't mean that we got the double cheeseburger. What happened to my cheeseburger here? I know. The Doug Big Doug is like a devil. And then we got the uh, fish sandwich. All right, so you got that chicken and fish. And then just a uh, Copy those right here.
Jesus. So you can see now that we, in fact, do have 11 things here. Let's see what we got. Where is it here? Get rid of the. Okay. So again, like I said, you can sell whatever you want as long as you have 10 mm -hmm. items. Check your numbers a couple times to make sure that they in fact are in sequence. You should have four things for 10 items. You should have a zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three. For each item you're sent, uh, selling. So once this thing is developed, it's pretty generic, right? Since to change what I could change whatever I'm selling by just changing the names and prices down here. It doesn't matter if I'm selling uh, video games, movies, uh, cards, uh, food, worms, bugs, pets, it don't matter whatever you want to sell, stocks, guns, toilet paper, be a good one right now. Can you scroll down a little bit? Do you want? I mean, they're all the same. Just make up whatever you sell. You've never been to McDonald's okay. or something. I don't know.
Who needs more time? Anybody? Speak up. Okay, breathe. Um, let's go over back over to our form POS. And we're going to go in the, the form right now. We're going to go to an event over here, the lightning bolt. And we're going to do our form closing. So I'm just going to go ahead and double click that. Go over to my uh, my main here. Let's see this right here. I'm assuming you all know POS needs a point of sale. If you don't, now you do. All right. There's a new
paid more invoices. Is it because there's a comma between the no to start a new sale and the VB new line instead of an and? Because it's outside of the quotes. Yes, Thank you. There we go. No. We got another one. Yeah, right here. Okay, where else? Let's do this. Okay. That one is. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay, what's going on here? Event rest is here. Jars. We forgot to do the um, the header of the thing, like the title of the dialog box. Oh, I never mind. There it is. Oh, okay, crazy. I see it. This would be another. But yeah, it's missing. So right here, right? Now we should be able to stop that loop, I think. See if it works. Okay, so if I click here, it says yes to close, no to start a new one. Cancel to continue. Okay, so. 
hit no, it opens up a new one. If I hit yes, supposed to do that. No, it starts a new one, yeah. And then cancel just continues the current sale. Okay, that's good. Okay, so you should be able to test yours now. Tell us if yours doesn't do this. When you go to close, you should get this. And it should, if you hit uh, no, it should stay there. If you hit yes, it should close. And then we'll also test something else here. Uh, let's just test this real quick too. Did I put that in form closing? I did. Let's see that out. Put it in form real quick. I just don't have the form. Well, let me just add a button here real quick. Let's try it out. Who has seen that? I'm not even going to name it. I just want to make sure it's working. All right, so it's running and I'm gonna hit the button. And I gotta put in. Hmm. It doesn't crash. Really should be a dug hole. Why am I not getting it? to work though. Try this. Why would it not do that? The button is there.
not crashing, but it is in the same impact. It's bizarre. Well, that's a stumper here. G underscore string items one comma O public global. Oh, I know why. We didn't initialize the array. Yeah, un uncheck that. Uh, There we go. So make sure you uh, undo the comment or add that comment out, and then it should run. So now if I just do it again. Okay. Uh, echo down here. And now it should still look like it is. Should I put it there? There's no point in going there. Uh, watch when I hit this thing. Yeah. So just make sure that you can, uh, that it's able to hit your uh, array. And remember, you have 44 items in your array uh, that you can uh, go to. All right, everybody got one that works. You've proven that you can yes. get there. Proven you can get to the that you can reach those items. And we know we also can get to our um uh, Our Boolean flag here, because now we're able to prevent the infinite loop here. All right, so now we're back over here. And I'm going to add a couple labels first. I'm going to make them pretty much the same size. And I'm going to put a label subtotal. On this one, and this one will be label item price or something like that. I want the, the uh, subtotal up on top. I guess this could be net label net. And I'm going to do the net val thing. 
case I want to put something next to it. And then I'm going to change this one to and make this item val. And Size like that. No, we're black. No border style. Pick single. Uh, font. I'm going to make it, I had it as Arial regular 10. I think I'm going to make it 16. Start with that. And with a four color of Lawn green should look like that. Now I'm going to go back up to my font again and make it 20 bold. Depending on the size of what you're selling. So in my case, let's say the most I would ever sell at one time might be. Let's say just under a thousand dollars. So nine 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 dot nine nine. So my um, my text align here will be over here, and I think that's good. Four color da 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 da. Those are decent size, I think. And you can, I mean, if you've got a different font, let's look just for the heck of it. Pull this out. If there's anything more like a, um, a digital, Bernard and team up with that. I'm looking for some of those. Broadway. Oh, that's so hard. So try, I'm looking for one that looks kind of like an electronics. A digital. Nothing that looks real. Like a digital you know, calculator type of thing. I don't know, that ain't too bad. Um, I'll 
I'm going to actually go up a size. I like that. So I'm at about 30 or 28, something like that. Okay. And this is my label net value. This is my label item value. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and put in some buttons. something about that size, I guess. And I'm not worried about the name right now. Well, I am worried about the name. It's, it's going to be button item one. BPN item one. And, but I don't care what the text is, I'm going to load it later on. Okay. Text line middle center is fine. Um, that color I can do later in form mode. A tag. So all we're doing to these is name numbering them and tagging them. So that's my one there. Okay. We'll do that. C. D. D. C. Control D. Control V. C, control B,
like that. Okay. So this, let's see what I got here. Let's start zero one. That don't work. Okay, so that's that screws up. This is gonna be Begin item two, begin item three, item four. I got this wrong. I'm thinking too much. Was BTM item five. Again, this is generic because I'm going to load the names later on. So I could do this with any anything I wanted to sell. Here is my No, I need to subtract and a clear button. Okay. So this one. So this one here will be. And subtract. And this one is going to be. One's going to be BTM clear, I think. That is in the button. Okay, we need to set the tags too before I forget. So on this one, the tag should be one. This one, the tag will be two. Tag three. Seven, tag 
eight, tab nine, then tab ten. And this one, the tab will be uh. We'll need zero for now. And back to what I think I'm going to make it like warning things. So I think I'll make it yellow or orange. Uh, the subtract is not a button, it's a checkbox. That looks like a button. So this is going to be PHK track appearance will be a button. Auto size will be turned off. I'm just going to set it on top of this. I can get a size on it. And I'll make this. Subtract. I'll make that red right off the bat or not. Hmm. Press it, it should turn to red. And I'm changing the front here to um, mold. I don't think this is as yet on the flow. I think that's okay. I think I uh, will we'll make this um, the tag on this. Let's go with 11. I might have to change that later on. Or you know what? That can be my. Uh, that'll be confusing. I'll make it eleven. All right. I think. Uh, well, let's put a list box in, and then we'll call it a day. All right. And I think I'll just call this LST items 
items sold. And I'll save that. So that's, I think, what our POS is going to look like. Let me check one more time. See if we're missing anything. Clear next. Oh, we need a next button. Sure do. But other than that, I think we're good. Go back. Put our That one there. Clear button here. Okay, so this will be those clicking up these buttons in that. Oh. So this will be button next. Drab. Check something here. Mm, nah, black it is. And down at the bottom, text. And then back to there. Now I'm going to save. So I want to save that tag for this one. Is going to be 12. Looks like that takes 12. No, I don't have a tag. This should be tag. What happened to tag 11? This tag will be 11. Then 9, 8. Oops. Where's my channel? One eight seven six five four. Hey Doug. Two one what? Um, so each like different part of the final program is gonna have its own next button, right? Yeah. So so if you're naming this one next button, what are you gonna name the other next buttons? Next button. So you can have multiple buttons with the sure, same this name. This is only good in this. This name's only good in this form. Oh, okay. Yeah, and don't pay any attention to the text on these because it does like this one says it's button seven, but it's really going to be button eight later on. Yeah, okay. Just the tag is eight, so don't worry. None of the text on these buttons over here. Are what they're gonna be because we're gonna load that text off of the uh, array in the mod main. Okay. 
when we run this thing, it's going to load all these names in to our POS. Okay, anybody got questions before we call this thing to a halt for today? Nope, have a good day. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing then. And I will also stop recording. <laughs>